So much news going on off the track. Silly season. It's season silly. It's silly A season. Uh, some drama going on within the walls of IndyCar series. Some. some? Not, yeah. Plenty of drama there. Uh, silly season. I always think it starts early. But no, it typically starts right around the end of May, first of the summer. But with Denny Hamlin uh, allegedly looking into buying one of these charters from Stuart Haas Racing, that, of course, is out there. I don't think that's allegedly anymore. He's pretty, he will have three cars next year, but it's now who will fill the seat. And there's a lot of people leaning towards one guy who's been mentioned for months, mm -hmm. but. Bob Pockress like to put another name in that hat. And we'll share that with you, Freak Nation. But the whole charter system, Denny Hamlin, great podcast with Dirty Mo Media. If you watch his podcast, you know what I'm talking about. You can tell when Denny Hamlin gets serious. He has this look, and there's some pauses in his <laughs> commentary. And coming up next segment, we're going to play it. We're going to do it next segment. Yeah, next segment, we're going to play some of this interview or some of this podcast where Denny Hamlin's talking about these charters. And according to Denny Hamlin, what he says in this soundbite, don't believe everything that you're hearing coming out of NASCAR about how close they are and how it's a better presentation, how they've seceded some of the, the items that, no, it's not there yet. So the silly season with charters and where this charter system is going to be at the end of the year. We're sitting here first middle part of June and maybe November by the time Phoenix rolls around with the cup series, there may be some movement. Maybe. But, but the way it looks now, Crasher, Suave, this may get pretty, pretty freaking ugly before it looks even better than what, or it looks better than it is now. Hasn't it already become a little bit ugly? Maybe just, it's it's become ugly in its own way. It's not nasty yet, but both sides are kind of pointing fingers at the other saying, uh-uh, that's not what we discussed, or no, you've never brought that up to me before. So, yes, it's ugly enough right now, but is it going to get worse? If they don't start actually communicating with each other, then yes, without question. Suava, you're the residential millennial that we have here in the Freak Nation. That's and, true. And if, if, if Twitter or X was... A girlfriend, they would be or a girl, they'd be your girlfriend because you uh, you spend more time with Twitter and X than the most people I That's know. That's so true. Yes. What's the what's the overall opinion that you're seeing <laughs> that you're seeing on Twitter or X? Yeah, people love silly season, man. I feel yeah. like I feel like this year more so than in previous years, it is like ramped up to eleven, and mm -hmm. and not just in NASCAR, but also in Formula One as well. Right, it got up to an early start when Lewis Hamilton on February first on my birthday. I wake up at six o'clock in the morning for no reason and see that Lewis Hamilton is going to Ferrari in 2025, <laughs> and then from there it's just gotten more insane. And half the grid is still um, has still not been filled out for 2025. The mo most recent um, car to drop for 2025 and beyond is Sergio Chico Perez is staying with Red Bull right. through mm -hmm. 2026. So Formula One is crazy, and then you got NASCAR on top of that with four charters being up for grabs and it's going to be it's there's those are going to go for, i can't even imagine how much is there, those are going to go for right the last ones to be sold i believe were prior to 2023 and they sold for 40 million dollars right yep. so can you imagine how much those four charters are going to go for and how in demand they are going to be especially with the speculation now that in this new charter system that nascar is negotiating with its teams there's allegedly going to be a cap on charters that you can have and right. I, I believe it's going to be four so um, I wonder what that's going to do to where these charters are going to go. We know uh, Front Row Motorsports has already put their name out there as wanting to get one. They've said that publicly. So, and that those four drivers are going to be fighting for jobs elsewhere. Mm -hmm. It's like, I love this stuff, man. It's so cool. It's like it's speculation galore. And you can go on Reddit. You can go on any motorsports website. You can go on TikTok. And that's all you see every day. There's another new update. And where a driver is going to go, where uh a charter is going to go. Who's going to go where in Formula One? I love it, man. I love it. It's so much fun. So if four becomes the actual magic number that no team can have more than four charters, and if Denny Hamlin truly sees that that will become the number, what are the possibilities of him jumping for two of these Stuart Haas charters out of the gate? One thing that, and, and this is this is a great tease, Denny Hamlin 
will somehow answer that if you, when it comes to the finances with affording a NASCAR Cup Series team. He'll be joining us next segment to talk about this charter system. And again, to refresh those, sometimes we get locked up in our own bubble here, and some of you are watching, what the hell's the charter system? It's basically where NASCAR is, NASCAR and the team owners are wanting to establish something very similar to the National Football League, where you have Jerry Jones, owner of the Cowboys, or Michael Bidwell, the owner of the Cardinals, where they have a vested interest in that team. They own that team, and that's what the NASCAR team owners want to establish with these charters to where when they sell, i.e. Tony Stewart, Stewart Haas Racing, if this $40 million figure holds, there's $120 million for, right? He's got three cup Mm -hmm. teams. Right. Yes. Three cup teams. There's 120 it just, million. It provides an almost guaranteed value. Right. Which makes selling if you're just not able to continue a racing position. It just makes it so much more worth it. Whereas just a few years ago, you couldn't do that. So, yes, this is this is worth it. This is why IndyCar owners are in Roger Penske. They're trying to establish something very similar. Right. Put better value back into these series. And again, yes, the 800-pound gorilla in the room is the NFL, and they've established and shown that this is extremely possible. And the team owners, from what we hear, and frankly, a couple of team owners that we saw at Worldwide Technology Raceway last weekend, Denny Hamlin being one of them, they're just not happy where they are at this point. And we're not going to spend a full hour talking about these freaking charters, but it's a big dang deal because – as Denny Hamlin will share with us coming up next segment, the finances of running a team. If Denny Hamlin and Michael freaking Jordan, still one of the most popular sports stars on the planet, if they can't afford, meaning mm. if if they're losing money on their NASCAR Cup teams, what do you think other teams are doing? Yeah, what's wrong with the entire system? Right? Yeah. So, yeah, uh, uh, coming up next, Denny Hamlin will be joining us here in the Freak Nation talking about these charters, this charter system. Also, Corey Heim, NASCAR Truck Series winner from Worldwide Technology Raceway, who's been associated with Denny Hamlin. He'll be joining us this hour. Also, coming up, Petter Solberg. And from 2005, Tony Stewart, a freak of flashback, as we get set for our 24th year of doing Speed Freaks on the Freak Radio Network, and right here on MAV-TV. Freak Nation, it's getting hot out there. Make sure you're rolling on a new set of General Tires. Go to GeneralTire.com to check out the line of tires to keep your truck, your passenger car, your minivan nice and smooth and happy on the road this summer. Go to GeneralTire.com. It's GeneralTire.com to find the tire for your righteous Right. Are you still mad that I did not want a minivan for our family? You were, you were all about minivans and you covering drag boats as mm-hmm. frequently as you have over the last 15 years for Mav TV, by the way. 20 years. Uh, oh, okay. Well, well, yeah. Excuse me. Yep. <laughs> you would frequently get a minivan rental van. Yep. And there were a couple times that we cruised around, cruised around in that thing. And you were all about it, about it. I, I just could not believe that here is this dad that wants a minivan and his wife, mom, was never about it. It just that doesn't seem to fit your personality, Mr. Minivan. It's like a mini RV. I mean, I could put the thing on cruise control, okay. set the steering straight and go back there and make me a ham sandwich. I don't do that. I'm joking. I don't do that. <laughs> But I'm, you could. I'm if, not. I'm good, not as fast. It was a Waymo Listen, minivan. If we were blasting out Waymo. three or four kids, absolutely. But Ooh. now, uh, when I go, like I'm, I'm, yeah. When I when I head out of town and I'm renting cars, I go for a big fat freaking truck, or I, if if they have a uh, Dodge Challenger or Charger, oh. hopped up, I'm jumping in that damn thing. So yeah, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, all jacked up about a freaking minivan. Your right minivan now. phase is closed. I wouldn't. You know, if we go on a big ass road trip and we're going to rent a car with you, okay. me, my daughter, and a crap ton of luggage, minivan might be on the horizon. Yeah. Are we doing Laguna Seca? Because oh, if so, it could be minivan. People are turning off their TV sets. 
and log on off of YouTube right now. They're in the family business on television. And the gentlemen. radio network, they're Love turning this. off the Great. radios, man, going, why in the hell are you guys talking about this? Because many, every family has gone through a minivan phase. Every family. We had big vans when I was growing up. And it was a long time ago. But we loved our big van. Big ass bucket you had a good seats in the middle. Van. We did. You? Yeah, yes. you had a good time. Bucket Why seats in the middle, the couch in the back. <laughs> vans are fun. I just, when the minivans came in, I was more about the good times and less about the mini. Listen, some dude Paul pulls up in front of my house when my daughter's 16, 17 years old in a freaking minivan. I say, nope, you take that SOB home and you go get yourself a freaking two seater. You're not hopping in that minivan, girlfriend. Girlfriend, boyfriend, what? Says the guy who picked up his prom day to senior year in a freaking RV. See, what? You, <laughs> you are your own worst enemy. Oh. You are going to be the worst to her boyfriends. Yes, I am. Wow. All right, Freak Nation. Now let's get back into regularly scheduled programming. As we mentioned last segment, it. Denny Hamlin has a great podcast with Dirty Mo Media, Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s conglomerate. And we listen to it quite a bit, watch it quite a bit. There's some great sound bites that come out of it. And here's about a 90 seconds of Denny Hamlin talking about charters. And listen closely to what he says here. And we'll pontificate on really where we think Denny Hamlin's going with these charters and ownership. It's Denny Hamlin here, the Freak Nation from Dirty Mo Media. 2311 interested in one of these four charters? 2311 is interested in getting a charter deal done on January 1st, 2025, we don't we don't even have a charter. You can't buy or sell something that doesn't exist in our eyes. So um, we have two charters till the end of this year. And until we get a charter agreement done, that's all we have. I didn't build that facility to, to, to stay a two-car team, but it, it always has to make financial sense. I'm not going to put myself in a position to where you know, I'm having to shell out millions and millions of dollars every year to just keep this thing going. I'm not going to do that. I will not do that personally. Um, so it has to make financial sense. And the charter agreement needs to be better than what it is, uh, certainly uh, before I invest any more money in it. Is there light at the end of the tunnel? I, I don't know. I mean, not from what I've seen. Um you know, we, we, we got something back last week, but I didn't see anything there that was uh, much different than what we saw, saw in December. That's Ooh. from earlier this week, Crasher. Wow. So he says it needs to make better financial sense before he considers another charter. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that as of right now, no way he's even considering two of those charters. Holy crap. Mm. Well, Denny's business. He acumen, might not even pick up a single other one. The way he's talking right there, he might not even go for a third, even though we've been talking about him getting that third for a while now. Suave, what's your take from Denny Hamlin and the whole charter system mess? You remember back um, about um, maybe about a month and a half ago when he first opened up about these negotiations for the first time and he mm -hmm. talked about some of the things that they were wanting in these negotiations. And there were a couple of things that have that I that kind of caught my eye from that. And he mentioned it again there. One of which was making these charters permanent. Mm -hmm. That's the big one. I think that's kind of his big holdout at the moment. And then number two, you talked about, and we mentioned this back in the first segment of the show as well, which is like, none of these race teams are making money. And the revenue split between NASCAR, between the tracks and the team ownership just is, ne is not going to work. It's not, it, it's not going to, it's, it's not sustainable. Right. So the way Denny's talking right there, we're six months out from these things expiring. That's not good, man. No, it's not. Like the, we're headed to the point. I mentioned this once in a while. We're headed to the point where I really do think it's possible that we might see these teams and drivers go on strike to start the next season. That's it. To me, that's the only way mm. in any labor negotiations you have any leverage. Cause right now NASCAR has all the leverage with all these ownerships because they know that those teams and drivers are going to show up at Daytona in February. Because they have to, because there's no other way to get around the business model that they have sponsors invested in and their own personal finances invested in. You're exactly right. It could be a perfect storm given where these network negotiations are going and headed and the kind of the amount of money, Crasher. Well, 
the network negotiations in NASCAR are done. Yeah, uh, in IndyCar, they're not done yet, but in NASCAR, they're done. Finish, meaning they've got these contracts done. These drivers go on strike. They owe Fox and NBC. Who owes? Broad, NASCAR does. Okay, they not owe the them teams. Broad, No, 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 no. No, okay. back up a second. The, their feet are going to be held close to the fire, and we know that. That's going to happen. NASCAR owes NBC and Fox. It'll be Fox, you know, kicking kicking off the right. season next year. Are going to owe them broadcasts, going to owe them live races. Okay. So they've got that leverage. Excuse me, that leverage to pull. Also, just like the, pardon me, Major League Baseball owners, and the strikes that have happened there, they don't want anyone to see their books. They <laughs> won't don't want to see any kind. They don't want them to get anywhere close to see what kind of cake these guys are making. Not at all. Even though Denny Hamlin, speaking of, has been one of the only owners to verbally say the percentages, 80% of the money that comes in from TV and track revenue goes back to NASCAR and the tracks that NASCAR owns, if not more. I, I'm throwing 80% out there. I don't have the figures in front of me. If not more. And the teams putting everything out on the line, gets they get hardly anything of that. Maybe 10%, well, maybe 15 Listen, I, I'm I'm a bit skeptical when they talk about they continue to lose money. I don't know the about teams the, the, the teams. Money. If if I'm losing money, then I'm a then I'm a dumb business owner. I'm not a smart business owner. I make ends meet as the owner of Speed Freaks. I know what my limits are. I can't go out and hire three or four other hosts because I couldn't pay them. I'd be losing money. Okay, but if you've got these drivers and and sponsor contracts at the beginning of the year and they all insist or they all state that you have to run every single race you get down three quarters of the way through the season you're not performing as well as you would have expected to and you're not making the money back from nascar that you would have expected to yeah you're losing money it it is possible to lose money well Denny's, did, if you go back and listen to that comment he says losing again it might be part it's probably part hyperbole i get that millions and millions and millions Michael Jordan's not going to be losing millions and millions of dollars. I just, I don't believe it. And part of the business acumen that Denny's talked about him learning was from Michael Jordan. Mm -hmm. I just, there's somewhere in the middle here, man. Well, we know Joe Gibbs racing was suffering with bringing in sponsorships that were able to help actually pay the bills. Yeah. How'd that FedEx work out? We mm -hmm. talked about that a year we and a half yep. ago. We knew FedEx wasn't coming back full time. And then, of course, with Stuart Haas now, that's mm -hmm. there's a lot of things that factor into the Stuart Haas decision to close up shop way beyond money coming in or out. Knew that was happening last year. Okay. Yay. Kenny Sargent knows everything. <laughs> Just don't want to burn any bridges <laughs> right about now. All right, Freak Nation. Coming up next, uh, Corey Heim, Worldwide Technology Raceway NASCAR Truck Series winner. He joins us next. And the connection between Denny Hamlin and Corey Heim, and another driver that we'll share with you. It's all coming up. Speed Freaks Pits and the Lucas Oil Studios, right here on MAV-TV. Mm -hmm. 